Alec, I'm not some war you have to win. You're not an N7 anymore. That doesn't mean we- They kicked you out of the Alliance for this. We only get one chance to be first. So, let's go make history. I've been waiting 600 years for this. Mass Effect Andromeda. We start you off as a generic character. You wake up from cryo sleep, as you've seen several hundred years. Now, I am going to delve into Mass Effect 3's ending to explain my character's appearance. So, major spoilers ahead. If you see over here, Shepard sacrifices himself, in my case, a male Shepard sacrifices himself and thrusts himself into this machine um, and there's this green beam now mind you this is one of those um, the real ending as they call it uh, Genesis or symbiosis or um, basically this green beam spread across the galaxy uh, the Milky Way through the mass effect relays um, bonding metal, uh, artificial intelligence with um, the organic beings. Um, the other two options were either controlling the um, the Reapers, you know, basically uh, starting the process all over again, or destroying the Reapers that were massed next to Earth and killing several billion or trillion beings. So yeah, this is one of the lesser of two evils. Now, the interesting thing that happened here is that it bonded um, organics and, you know, mechanics, you know, um, it gave each other a purpose. Organics were no longer bound by DNA's deterioration and, uh, you know, uh, people who were made of metal uh, were trying to find the soul that many uh, biotics alive. have. One of the interesting of things is that this cutscene at the end of Mass Effect 3 kind of parallels changed. with, um, you know, here we have Edie's eye, and then it parallels to what happens to your character. Instead of um, a shepherd, you are a writer. Um, you see this cutscene over here, you know, um, something happens to you, and your body goes into shock. Uh, you have your friends over here trying to save you and one of the things that we saw in the intro uh, they were talking about a um, you know an, a blue orb called Sam well Sam is an artificial intelligence and in order to save you um, this artificial intelligence uh, has to be attached to your uh, central nervous system um, this AI constantly talks to you and it is learning from your own life, evolving, becoming more human. And it, it, I find it interesting that the, um, the real Mass Effect 3 ending correlates a lot with, um, with this ending, and, or not with this ending, but with this um, intro. And I chose my character's uh, aquamarine green um, uh, tattoos and and eyes before I saw Welcome this cutscene because I wanted to pay homage to that ending of Mass Effect 3. Here you have it. So, that's how I explain my character's backstory. And it's quite interesting that it ties to this. Uh, over here, what you're seeing on the screen is called a Scourge. Once you on, arrive on Andromeda, the Scourge is like this um, antimatter. Uh, or anti-energy cloud that it's, uh, you know, um, it has uh, stopped some ships from reaching their destination and you are set to explore and uh, find out uh, if the nearby solar systems have any clues as to what this thing is or it's going to be a problem later on and you have a crew um, I'll get into a crew later on but you start off basically you know pretty basic you have your basic uh, uniform the white one over here uh, you are to explore um, different uh, worlds um, you know right here it says safe condition 
uh, there are some uh, parts of these worlds that you will have to um, terraform in order to uh, explore. You do terraforming by exploring these things called vaults. Um, inside uh, most planets, there seems to be vaults linking all. Most of the habitable planets have these vaults. It's kind of a giant coincidence, and people think it's the, uh, the remnants of an ancient civilization, You've got a uh, path to which may or may not explain the, uh, the Scourge, which is a pretty cool concept. It's kind of like unlocking towers um, in Assassin's Creed in order to explore the maps, you know, for um, that kind of um, exploration technique. And the bolts are guarded by these machines that you can, you know, uh, pick up and uh, find some good loot. My recommendation is to always pick up all the loot. You are in another galaxy. Uh, training is really limited, so whenever you get into a situation and you have the ability to do some nice finishers and bad guys, make sure to pick up everything they drop off. Now, the cool thing is that please pick your teammates um, you know, accordingly. There are some teammates who are stronger than others. And there are some teammates that are better for exploration or infiltration and things like that. You just have to kind of play along and figure out which one is which. Now, once you uh, unlock the bolt, you will um, ignite um, this weird ancient structure. Um, and I won't spoil um, how you unlock that, but you kind of have to save pretty often in this game. Um, once you trigger it, the uh, vault will trigger a self-defense mechanism, which we'll, you'll have to outrun. I caught it in this uh, video to demonstrate, um, you know, to, to leave some kind of tease for you. So for, one, for when you play the game, you kind of go, oh man, that was awesome. And here I have another shot of uh, <laughs> me trying to walk out of the vault, kind of epic. Which is pretty cool, it's a giant task. You're basically terraforming entire planets, making them uh, somewhat hospitable for life. Once that happens, you beacon um, your teammates in, in the Nexus uh, spaceship. It's kind of like a smaller version of the Citadel. They'll send dropships uh, for colonizing. You'll have marshals, you'll have medical team explorers. Uh, you know, the works. You set out outposts. And once these outposts are settled, you'll have side missions. And more time will commence. Once this happens, uh, you will have to fight the <laughs> mighty architects. And uh, they're pretty cool. They remind me of the first time we played um, Metal Gear 2, uh, the PlayStation 2. You know, it's just like this giant um, Metal Gear creature. And uh, I was a I didn't know how to beat them, I was stuck. And, you know, make sure that you have um, plenty of ammo, because these things are a little bit uh, relentless. Not only do they have bad guys that they spawn, but they have these little nano machines that appear right here. They just kind of go to where you're at and get into your shit. So yeah, be careful with that one. It's pretty fun. Um, after that, you're off to explore the galaxy. Now, you do get your own ship. And it's very different from the other ships. is a little bit better. One main complaint is that, for instance, um, I happen to like redheads, we know. <laughs> and Subi is not species, available to uh, romance, right? It's bizarre, um, horrifying, I was kind of disappointed because I thought in the future the ones, everybody would be open to everything. Just think. While you're poking but whatever, around genetics, you know, it's a limitation, and that's the thing with the limitation huh. of the AI. I kind of wish that uh, some of your crewmates were, were good for romance, others would be to good things. to, like, um, you know, have side quests, you know, like, hey, take this teammate with you to explore this planet and just go hunt down bugs or something like that, you know? Anyways, um, once you get a lot of gear, you want to pick up something that balances, um your play style. I am very good at uh, short distance. I have this gauntlet called Assassin's Creed. <laughs> it, I think it's funny. I have a sword, but then I also have the Krogan Hammer, which I highly recommend you uh, unlock. 
I also have some sniper rifles and shotguns and my outfit you know I kind of choose uh, to name them really cool names like, like El Vaquero or Tron because it has some glowy thingies <laughs> but yes one of the key things about it is you need to find um, what what uh, suit works better for you what outfit works better for you what um, you know guns work better for you play around um, for instance, you can change the uh, look of your character. I like orange, black and white, and you know. Um, so I chose that design across um, uh, both, you know, the suited and just regular um, clothing. And you will need to go across the galaxy to find a lot of supplies. And you know, because you progress in the story, you will get better armor and you will need more supplies. Now these are the Angara. And they are the local, um, I guess you can say they're the current local population of Andromeda. Um, not throughout Andromeda, but throughout the most hospitable planet that you find over here. And it's a beautiful planet. Um, you do have a lot of side quests with these people. And it's kind of cool to do because it's so alien and so unlike Mass Effect uh, trilogy that it feels really cool. But you do want to be able to get to merchants to pick up minerals, which you will need to um, upgrade your armor and your weapons and, you know, sometimes even, you know, um, any keys for unlocking the vaults and things like that. If you don't want to do that weird alien sud Sudaku kind of little mini game, um, you do upgrade your own car, your nomad uh, with paint jobs or mods. Now this place over here, um, it seems really cool. It seems like a like a Fallout 4 uh, kind of um, habitat. Um, but it, this is basically um, I got really excited because it's full of like pirates who don't want to join the uh, Andromeda Initiative, and you know I thought, ooh, it's gonna be full of Han Solos and you know Cantina and stuff. Um, you can even you know help solve murders, you know. And there are corpses lying on the street. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I realized, I was like, oh, wait a minute. We've seen this kind of thing before. It's just like the Omega <laughs> facility back in the Milky Way. So it was, like, disappointing but giddy at the same time. And I think this is around the time that I got um, plateaued. Because I played this game for almost three and a half weeks straight up. Um... <laughs> At this point, I had one planet left to discover. I was kind of like, eh, I'm kind of done, you know. Um, you really think we can shut this thing down? But you know, overall, um, I've, after playing for I don't know, now maybe we'll 30, 40 hours, um, you know, so on and off, and some weird schedule that I have between We're classes, work, and girlfriend, and family, and life. <laughs> I found Mass Effect to be a really great distraction for. Um, just pure escapism. Um, the fact that you're able to build a bond with, um, you know, your dad, your over here that has an N7 Sam, uh, suit, who's voiced by Tom Clancy, I believe, who voiced like Luthor um, in the animated series uh, for Translation. Superman. That was pretty cool. He kind of has like a connection to the old um, Milky Way galaxy and my character has the tattoo on the forehead to kind of represents the explosion of green that matched the machines and biotics in the old game so that was my little homage to the previous uh, trilogy now this new trilogy uh, definitely stands on its own I can't wait to uh, explore all the beautiful worlds that um, Andromeda has to offer and even though my love for it has plateaued I still want to go back and discover all the things there are to discover because it's such a brilliant game and I don't know what the haters are smoking maybe they need to unlock uh, more bolts so they can breathe better air <laughs> because this game is uh, it's truly a gem you know especially around these times when there's so many depressing things on media I believe this gets a 9.1 out of 10 so there you have it thank you very much